CIET NCERT presents audio book of social science for class 8 entitled Social and Political Life 3 This is the lesson number 10 Law and Social Justice from page number 120 to page number 132 Let's listen to the lesson number 10 Law and Social Justice page number 20 Do you recall the story of a shirt from your class 8 book We saw there that a chain of markets links the producer of cotton to the buyer of the shirt in the supermarket Buying and selling was taking place at every step in the chain Many of the people directly or indirectly involved in the production of the shirt the small farmer producing cotton the weavers of a road or the workers in the garment exporting factory faced exploitation or an unfair situation in the market markets everywhere tend to be exploitative of people whether as workers consumers or producers to protect people from such exploitation the government makes certain laws these laws try to ensure that the unfair practices are kept at a minimum in the markets page number 121 let us take a common market situation where the law is very important this is the issue of workers wages private companies contractors business persons normally want to make as much profit as they can in the drive for profits they might deny workers their rights and not pay them wages for example in the eyes of the law it is illegal or wrong to deny workers their wages similarly to ensure that workers are not underpaid or are paid fairly There is a law on minimum wages. A worker has to be paid not less than a minimum wage by the employer. The minimum wages are revised upwards every few years. As with the law on minimum wages, which is meant to protect workers, there are also laws that protect the interests of producers and consumers in the market. These help ensure that the relation between these three parties, the worker, consumer and producer, are governed in a manner that is not exploitative why do we need a law on minimum wages find out a what is the minimum wage for a construction worker in your state b do you think the minimum wage for a construction worker is adequate low or high c who sets the minimum wages workers in a textile mill in ahmedabad faced with greater competition from power looms A majority of the textile mills closed down during the 1980s and 1990s. Power looms are small units with 4 to 6 looms. The owners operate them with hired and family labor. It is well known that conditions of work in the power looms are far from satisfactory. The above was page number 121. Page number 122. Table 1 provides some important laws relating to the protection of these various interests. Column 2 and 3 in Table 1 state why and for whom these laws are necessary. Based on discussions in the classroom, you have to complete the remaining entries in the table. Table 1. Law. Minimum Wages Act specifies that wages should not be below a specified minimum. Why is it necessary? Many workers are denied fair wages by their employers because they badly need work. Workers have no bargaining power and are paid low wages. Whose interests does the law protect? This law is meant to protect the interests of all workers, particularly farm laborers, construction workers, factory workers, domestic workers, etc. law specifying that there be adequate safety measures in workplaces for example alarm system emergency exits properly functioning machinery why is it necessary whose interests does the law protect law requiring that quality of goods meet certain prescribed standards for example electrical appliances have to meet safety standards why is it necessary Consumers might be put to risk by the poor quality of products such as electrical appliances, food, medicines. Whose interests does the law protect? 
law requiring that the prices of essential goods are not high for example sugar kerosene food grains why is it necessary whose interests does the law protect the interests of the poor who will otherwise be unable to afford these goods law requiring that factories do not pollute air or water why is it necessary whose interests does the law protect laws against child labor in workplaces why is it necessary whose interests does the law protect law to form workers unions or associations why is it necessary by organizing themselves into unions workers can use their combined power to demand fair wages and better working conditions whose interests does the law protect the above was page number 122 page number 123 by merely making laws is not enough the government has to ensure that these laws are implemented this means that the law must be enforced enforcement becomes even more important when the law seeks to protect the weak from the strong for instance to ensure that every worker gets fair wages the government has to regularly inspect work sites and punish those who violate the law when workers are poor or powerless the fear of losing future earnings or facing reprisals often forces them to accept low wages employers know this well and use their power to pay workers less than the fair wage in such cases it is crucial that laws are enforced through making enforcing and upholding these laws the government can control the activities of individuals or private companies so as to ensure social justice many of these laws have their basis in the fundamental rights guaranteed by the indian constitution for instance the right against exploitation says that no one can be forced to work for low wages or under bondage similarly the constitution lays down no child below the age of 14 years shall be employed to work in any factory or mines or engaged in any other hazardous employment how are these laws played out in practice to what extent do they address the concerns of social justice these are some of the questions that this chapter will now go on to explore according to the 2011 census over 4 million children in india aged between 5 and 14 work in various occupations including hazardous ones in 2016 parliament amended the child labor prohibition and regulation act 1986 banning the employment of children below the age of 14 years in all occupations and of adolescents 14 to 18 years in hazardous occupations and processes it made employing these children or adolescents a cognizable offense Any one found violating the ban must be penalized with a punishment ranging from a jail term of 6 months to 2 years and or fine of rupees 20000 to rupees 50000 The central government had asked state governments to develop plans to rescue and rehabilitate children who are working An online portal that is https/pencil.gov.in platform for effective enforcement for no child labor that is pencil has become functional in 2017 it is meant for filing of complaint child tracking implementation and monitoring of national child labor project that is nclp page number 124 bhopal gas tragedy the world's worst industrial tragedy took place in bhopal 24 years ago union carbide uc an american company had a factory in the city in which it produced pesticides At midnight on 2nd December 1984, methyl isocyanate, MIC, a highly poisonous gas, started leaking from this UC plant. Remembers Aziza Sultan, a survivor. At about 12:30 a.m., I woke up to the sound of my baby coughing badly. In the half light, I saw that the room was filled with a white cloud. I heard people shouting, "Run, run!" Then I started coughing, with each breath seeming as if I was breathing in fire. my eyes were burning the next morning within 3 days more than 8000 people were dead hundreds of thousands were maimed mass cremations most of those exposed to the poison gas came from poor working class families 
of which nearly 50,000 people are today too sick to work. Among those who survived, many developed severe respiratory disorders, eye problems and other disorders. Children developed peculiar abnormalities like the girl in the photo, a child severely affected by the gas. Page number 125. The disaster was not an accident. UC had deliberately ignored the essential safety measures in order to cut costs. Much before the Bhopal disaster, there had been incidents of gas leak killing a worker and injuring several. Members of UC Employee Union protesting. Despite the overwhelming evidence pointing to UC as responsible for the disaster, it refused to accept responsibility. In the ensuing legal battle, the government represented the victims in a civil case against UC. It filed a 3 billion compensation case in 1985, but accepted a lowly 470 million in 1989. Survivors appealed against the settlement, but the Supreme Court ruled that the settlement amount would stand. UC stopped its operations, but left behind tons of toxic chemicals. These have seeped into the ground, contaminating water. Dow Chemical The company who now owns the plant refuses to take responsibility for cleanup. Bags of chemicals lie strewn around the UC plant. The struggle for justice goes on. 24 years later, people are still fighting for justice, for safe drinking water, for healthcare facilities and jobs for the people poisoned by UC. They also demand that Anderson and the UC chairman who faces criminal charges be prosecuted. The above was page number 125. Page number 126. What is a worker's worth? Accidents are common to construction sites. Yet, very often, safety equipment and other precautions are ignored. If we are to understand the events leading to Bhopal disaster, we have to ask, why did Union Carbide set up its plant in India? One reason why foreign companies come to India is for cheap labour. Wages that the companies pay to workers, say in the USA, are far higher than what they have to pay to workers in poorer countries like India. For lower pay, companies can get longer hours of work. Additional expenses such as for housing facilities for workers are also fewer. Thus, companies can save costs and earn higher profits. Cost-cutting can also be done by other more dangerous means. Lower working conditions including lower safety measures are used as ways of cutting costs. In the UC plant, every safety device was malfunctioning or was in short supply. Between 1980 and 1984, the work crew for the MIC plant was cut in half from 12 to 6 workers. The period of safety training for workers was brought down from 6 months to 15 days. The post of night shift worker for the MIC plant was abolished. Read the following comparison between UC's safety system in Bhopal and its other plant in the US. At West Virginia, USA, computerized warning and monitoring systems were in place, whereas the UC plant in Bhopal relied on manual gauges and the human senses to detect gas leaks. At the West Virginia plant, emergency evacuation plans were in place but non-existent in Bhopal. Why are there such sharp differences in safety standards across countries? And even after the disaster happened, why was the compensation to the victims so low? One part of the answer lies in what is perceived as the worth of an Indian worker. One worker can easily replace another. Since there is so much unemployment, there are many workers who are willing to work in unsafe conditions in return for a wage. Page number 127 Making use of the workers' vulnerability, employers ignore safety in workplaces. Thus, even so many years after the Bhopal gas tragedy, there are regular reports of accidents in construction sites, mines or factories due to the callous attitude of the employers. Enforcement of Safety Laws As the lawmaker and enforcer, the government is supposed to ensure that safety laws are implemented. It is also the duty of the government to ensure that the right to life guaranteed under Article 21 of the Constitution is not violated. 
What was the government doing when there were such blatant violations of safety standards in the UC plant? First, the safety laws were lax in India. Second, even these weak safety laws were not enforced. Government officials refused to recognize the plant as hazardous and allowed it to come up in a populated locality. When some municipal officials in Bhopal objected that the installation of an MIC production unit in 1978 was a safety violation, the position of the government was that the state needs the continued investment of the Bhopal plant, which provides jobs. It was unthinkable, according to them, to ask UC to shift to cleaner technology or safer procedures. Government inspectors continued to approve the procedures in the plant, even when repeated incidents of leaks from the plant made it obvious to everybody that things were seriously wrong. This, as you know, is contrary to what the role of a lawmaking and enforcement agency should be. Instead of protecting the interests of the people, their safety was being disregarded both by the government and by private companies. This is obviously not at all desirable. With more industries being set up both by local and foreign businesses in India, there is a greater need for stronger laws protecting workers' rights and better enforcement of these laws. Why do you think enforcement of safety laws is important in any factory? Can you point to a few other situations where laws or rules exist, but people do not follow them because of poor enforcement? For example, overspeeding by motorists not wearing helmet or seat belt and use of mobile phone while driving. What are the problems in enforcement? Can you suggest some ways in which enforcement can be improved? Recently, a large travel agency was asked to pay rupees 8 lakh as compensation to a group of tourists. Their foreign trip was poorly managed and they missed Disneyland and shopping in Paris. Why did the victims of Bhopal gas tragedy then get so little for a lifetime of misery and pain? Page number 128 New laws to protect the environment In 1984, there were very few laws protecting the environment in India and there was hardly any enforcement of these laws. The environment was treated as a free entity and any industry could pollute the air and water without any restrictions. Whether it was our rivers, air, groundwater, the environment was being polluted and the health of people disregarded. Thus, not only was UC a beneficiary of lower safety standards, it didn't have to spend any money to clean up the pollution. In the USA, this is a necessary part of the production process. The Bhopal disaster brought the issue of environment to the forefront. Several thousands of persons who were not associated with the factory in any way were greatly affected because of the poisonous gases leaked from the plant. This made people realize that the existing laws, though weak, only covered the individual worker and not persons who might be injured due to industrial accidents. In response to this pressure from environmental activists and others, in the years following the Bhopal gas tragedy, the Indian government introduced new laws on the environment. Henceforth, the polluter was to be held accountable for the damage done to the environment. The environment is something that people over generations will share and it could not be destroyed merely for industrial development. The courts also gave a number of judgments upholding the right to a healthy environment as intrinsic to the fundamental right of life. In Subhash Kumar v. State of Bihar 1991, the Supreme Court held that the right to life is a fundamental right under Article 21 of the Constitution and it includes the right to enjoyment of pollution-free water and air for full enjoyment of life. The government is responsible for setting up laws and procedures that can check pollution, clean rivers and introduce heavy fines for those who pollute. A clean environment is a public facility. Can you explain this statement? Why do we need laws? Why are companies and contractors able to violate environmental laws? Page number 129 Environment as a public facility In recent years, while the courts have come out with strong orders on environmental issues, these have sometimes affected people's livelihoods adversely. For instance, the courts directed industries in residential areas in Delhi to close down or shift out of the city. Several of these industries were polluting the neighbourhood and discharge from these industries was polluting the river Yamuna because they had been set up without following the rules. 
But while the court's action solved one problem, it created another. Because of the closure, many workers lost their jobs. Others were forced to go far away places where these factories had relocated. And the same problem now began to come up in these areas, for now these places became polluted. And the issue of the safety condition of workers remained unaddressed. Recent research on environmental issues in India has highlighted the fact that the growing concern for the environment among the middle classes is often at the expense of the poor. So, for example, slums need to be cleaned as a part of city's beautification drive or as in the case above, a polluting factory is moved to the outskirts of the city. And while this awareness of the need for a clean environment is increasing, there is little concern for the safety of the workers themselves. The challenge is to look for solutions where everyone can benefit from a clean environment. One way this can be done is to gradually move to cleaner technologies and processes in factories. The government has to encourage and support factories to do this. It will need to find those who pollute. This will ensure that the workers' livelihoods are protected and both workers and communities living around the factories enjoy a safe environment. Do you think everyone got justice in the case cited above? Can you think of other ways in which the environment can be protected? Discuss in class. Emissions from vehicles are a major cause of environmental pollution. In a series of rulings 1998 onwards, the Supreme Court had ordered all public transport vehicles using diesels were to switch to compressed natural gas, CNG. As a result of this move, air pollution in cities like Delhi came down considerably. But a recent report by the Centre for Science and Environment, New Delhi, shows the presence of high levels of toxic substance in the air. This is due to emissions from cars run on diesel rather than petrol and a sharp increase in the number of cars on the road. Workers outside closed factories. Thrown out of work, many of the workers end up as small traders or as daily wage labourers. Some might find work in even smaller production units where the conditions of work are even more exploitative and the enforcement of laws weaker. The above was page number 129, page number 130. Conclusion Laws are necessary in many situations, whether this be the market, office or factory, so as to protect people from unfair practices. Private companies, contractors, business persons, in order to make higher profits, resort to unfair practices such as paying workers low wages, employing children for work, ignoring the conditions of work, ignoring the damage to the environment and hence to the people in the neighbourhood, etc. A major role of the government, therefore, is to control the activities of private companies by making, enforcing and upholding laws so as to prevent unfair practices and ensure social justice. This means that the government has to make appropriate laws and also has to enforce the laws. Laws that are weak and poorly enforced can cause serious harm, as the Bhopal gas tragedy showed. While the government has a leading role in this respect, people can exert pressure so that both private companies and the government act in the interests of society. Environment, as we saw, is one example where people have pushed a public cause and the courts have upheld the right to healthy environment as intrinsic to the right to life. In this chapter, we have argued that people now must demand that this facility of healthy environment be extended to all. Likewise, workers' rights, right to work, right to a fair wage and decent work conditions is an area where the situation is still very unfair. People must demand stronger laws protecting workers' interests so that the right to life is achieved for all. Advanced countries are relocating the toxic and hazardous industries to developing countries to take advantage of the weaker laws in these countries and keep their own countries safe. South Asian countries, particularly India, Bangladesh and Pakistan, play hosts for industries producing pesticides, asbestos or processing zinc and lead. Shipbreaking is another hazardous industry that is growing rapidly in South Asia. Old ships no longer in use are sent to shipyards in Bangladesh and India for scrapping. These ships contain potentially dangerous and harmful substances. This photo shows workers breaking down a ship in Alang, Gujarat. 
Page number 131. Exercises 1. Talk to two workers, for example, construction workers, farm workers, factory workers, workers at any shop, to find out if they are receiving the minimum wages laid down by law. 2. What are the advantages to foreign companies in setting up production in India? 3. Do you think the victims of the Bhopal gas tragedy got justice? Discuss. 4. What do we mean when we speak of law enforcement? Who is responsible for enforcement? Why is enforcement so important? 5. How can laws ensure that markets work in a manner that is fair? Give two examples to support your answer. 6. Imagine yourself to be a worker working in a chemical factory which has received orders from the government to move to a different site 100 kilometers away from the present location. Write about how your life would change. Read out your responses in the classroom. 7. Write a paragraph on the various roles of the government that you have read about in this unit. 8. What are the sources of environmental pollution in your area? Discuss with respect to A, air, B, water and C, soil. What are the steps being taken to reduce the pollution? Can you suggest some other measures? 9. How was environment treated earlier? What has been the change in perception? Discuss. 10. What do you think the famous cartoonist R.K. Lakshman is trying to convey in this cartoon? How does it relate to the 2016 law that you read about on page 123? It's really cruel burdening kids like this. I had to hire that boy to help my son. Page number 132. 11. You have read about the Bhopal gas tragedy and the ongoing struggle. Students from countries across the world have come together to support this struggle for justice. From protest marches to awareness campaigns, you can read about their activities on the website www.studentsforbhopal.com. The website also has resources such as photos, posters, documentaries, victim statements, etc. Use this and other sources to make a wallpaper or exhibition on the Bhopal gas tragedy for your classroom. Invite the whole school to see and talk about it. Glossary Consumer An individual who buys goods for personal use and not for resale. Producer A person or organization that produces goods for sale in the market. At times, the producer keeps a part of the produce for his own use, like a farmer. Investment Money spent to purchase new machinery or buildings or training so as to be able to increase or modernize production in the future. Workers' Unions An association of workers. Workers' unions are common in factories and offices, but might be also found among other types of workers, say domestic workers' unions. The leaders of the union bargain and negotiate with the employer on behalf of its members. The issues include wages, work rules, rules governing hiring, firing and promotion of workers, benefits and workplace safety. The chapter 10 of total 10 chapters of the book ends here. Narrator Vasundhara Bose You were just listening to this audio book. Technical Control Bati Langlingdo, Technical Assistance, Vikas Sangwan, Assistance in Production, Amit Kumar, Direction and Production, Vimalesh Chaudhary. This audiobook is brought to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.